Uh, good evening all. Uh, Jester here. <clears throat> I have in my sweaty hands the review response to NHS, NHS England's consultation on the interim service specification for specialist gender dysphoria services for children and young people from the cash review, which is the independent review. Uh, it's a five page document and it's in response to the interim consultation, which finished yesterday. It's extraordinary to me that they left it this late to get it out. Um, unfortunately, it is not what we could have hoped. That's the first thing that you need to know. <clears throat> what it's saying is that the independent review has considered the consultation document and draft interim service specification that came from the NHS and makes the following response. In formulating this response, we, meaning them, have taken into account our ongoing work and research since the interim report. I am seriously concerned that they're not. The review's longer-term ambition for these services and our engagement with stakeholders to understand their perspectives has also taken place. I don't understand why you need to do research on something that was invented by John Money in 1950 and has become a social contagion that's affecting people. And you're using the very terminology that was used to cause the infection. I'm sorry, I don't get it. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong about this, because this is the cash report we're waiting for. What do you mean by a stakeholder? The captured? The cult members? Who do you mean? I sense middle class both sideism here. That's what I sense. And I want to be wrong, so tell me I'm wrong. We understand the imperative for NHS England to take action at this point in order to stabilise services and to build capacity in a managed way. You shouldn't be building capacity, you should be stopping it. We also recognise that this is an interim service specification describing the specialist gender service and does not describe the wider care pathway. Now, that's interesting in itself. That's interesting. Um, the review will be providing further advice about that in due course. So I, it, this may not be the fait accompli it feels like to me. Remember, I'm no doctor, right? In responding, we, can, we, are, we are keen to ensure that interim arrangements are in line with the direction of travel outlined by the review and that children, young people and their families are kept central to any approach. Absolutely. Because the specification describes both a consultation service to local professionals and a direct care service. The process of arriving at an individualised plan through joint decision making with young people and their families is not articulated as clearly as it could be, and our engagement with stakeholders indicates that a more explicit description of this would be reassuring. I, I, this is not good, okay? This is, this is, there's nothing, de there's nothing declarative about this. They're, 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 they're splitting hairs, I think. Have a look for yourself. The links are in the dubris. Right. So in addition to specific comments below, there is a general point regarding language. This may be a two-parter, by the way. Through the work of the review, it's become clear that people have different interpretations of what many of the terms used, particularly in relation to gender-affirming care and a, an explorative therapeutic care. There is no such thing as gender-affirming care. There is only the mutilation of children based on stereotypes. In the interim report, we tried to reflect that this is not an either or situation. We advise that NHS services should be respectful of the experience of the child and young person. It's coming, isn't it? Wait for it. And be developmentally informed with clinicians remaining open to explore the patient experience and the range and support of treatment and options that may address the best their needs. This is this is insane. This is status quo with a new jacket. I want to be wrong. Will somebody who understands this properly please tell me I'm wrong? And then I'm just an overreacting, bloviating windbag. We recognise that the draft interim service specification has tried to reflect this, but more clarity, when they say reflect this, they mean the range of support and treatment, but more clarity to help to move away from artificial binary opposition between exploratory and affirmative approaches and break down the current ideological tensions. Oh, my God. There is no binary between exploratory and affirmative approaches. The affirmative approach is lunacy. 
It is lunacy. And I don't care how many tantrums the child has. It's lunacy. Oh, it's just so disappointing. Really, uh, just extraordinary. Extraordinarily disappointing. So they've talked about next proposed substantive changes. Composition of the clinical team. Doctors. We said, didn't we, there's going to be a doctor running it. You know, I want a bloody curmudgeon who hates this stuff running it. Right. The review welcomes the proposal around the composition of the clinical team. The new regional centre should have an appropriate multi-professional workforce. Yes. To enable them to manage the holistic needs of this population. It's not a population. Right. It's distressed children. As well as the ability to provide essential related services. What do they mean by essential related services? What will that be? Will be able to access such services through provider collaborations. This is more in line with a model of care across paediatrics and mirrors approaches being taken in many other countries. I don't care. There's nothing else like this. It will, however, be crucial that appropriate training and development initiatives are available to support the existing workforce. In what way? Also, that comprehensive workforce planning is undertaken to build the future workforce across all related services. You shouldn't be building a workforce. You should be reducing the workforce to prevent this from happening. Building a workforce? What? To take in all the new customers that are going to come along and after? This it stops. If we are to embed, the, to embed the care of children and young people with gender-related distress. They don't have gender-related distress, distress. They are ill. Gender is immaterial. It is immaterial as a concept and it's certainly immaterial when it comes to the idea that anybody should be distressed about it. I want to be... Tell me I'm so angry. Tell me I'm wrong about this. Please tell me. You'll make it real. If you don't say those simple words, gender doesn't exist, gender identity was made up in the 1960s. Right, let's talk about everything else that's going on in your life. That should be your first words. Clinical leadership, they're happy with that, as I was to a certain degree. But I'd rather have a curmudgeon running it, but there we go. The, they needed an, an appropriate skill mix to support both these individuals who do require medical intervention and those who do not. There are no individuals who require medical intervention. We know this from the Swedish model. We know this from the outcomes of the Swedish studies. We know that there should be no medical treatment based on the idea of gender identity. None of it. Or even body dysmorphia. It's too damaging to everyone concerned. This is most worrying, people. Most worrying. Please tell me I'm wrong. Collaboration. The, the new service needs to ensure children and young people receive support much earlier in the pathway to reduce the risk of diagnostic overshadowing. But they're still saying they're going to have what's called a gender service. There shouldn't be a gender service. It's a mental health service for young people who are in distress in their own particular way. It is not a gender service. Gender is immaterial. This approach also aligns the findings of the review's work with primary and secondary care professionals, many of whom feel they have the skills to support these children and young people, but need a ch additional training to build confidence and capability, building a better understanding of the needs of gender questioning children they're only they're questioning their gender because they've been taught to this is absolutely beyond the pale naive i can't is this the cat review is it because the naivety is astounding i, I just i don't know where to begin right uh, additionally, in this area, it will be important to keep in mind the long-term model the review has described in relation to operational delivery networks and the form and, and, and those formalised areas within that. Yeah, um, it's going to be a vertical structure. So, in, in other words, it's like a triage, and we should be able to get most people out of that before they get anywhere near surgery. But this is by nowhere, in my mind, declarative enough in its intent, and it is both sidesism intended to appease the cult. then they talk about referrals which is fine you know it's it's the referral should come from doctors that's it nobody 
should be referring kids based on a, a false idea of something called a gender identity, which was invented in the 1950s. This is derangement on a grand scale. They want a standardisation of approach with GPs and NHS professionals. Direct referrals are currently means that there is an adequate support for children and young people whilst on the waiting list. To alleviate the distress those children and young people may feel, I agree. I agree that we need more care for them. But it shouldn't be anything to do with gender. We've invented this. Social transition. Social transition. Through our discussion with stakeholders, who? It is clear that reference to social transition are a cause of concern. You bet. We acknowledge that the interim service specification describes how that specialist, the special services will operate and is not a statement about wider society. This is an important distinction, right? Social transition is a very broad term. Gender stereotypes are unhelpful and in some instances push young people into feeling they have to present a rigid binary male or female appearance. Changes in hairstyle or clothing may be part of a more fluid or non-gender conforming expression of identity. It's just insane. It's just insane. It's just insane. Why aren't the adults in the room? Why are you saying this? At the point of the presentation to, end, to point of presentation to NHS services, some children and young people will have socially transitioned already. Well, in that case, they're just living up to the stereotypes you're saying are the problem. What's going on, Cass? The role of the professional is to facilitate parents and carers, children and young people to engage in in-depth process of discussioning and thinking around this decision. No, it's not. It's to cure the child. It's to allow the child to cure themselves of this lie of gender identity ideology. This is an intellectual problem, not a psychological one. This is to include considering how this will fit within broader holistic approaches, holistic approaches to addressing families, uh, carers um, who are concerned or young persons' needs, how the process might proceed and wait for it, here it comes, how they will be supported and how they will be given opportunities to reflect on their lived experience. Who got to her? The endocrine interventions, I did, this is beyond me. I mean, I'm assuming it's, it's they're looking for, it's, it's how they get, when conditions that are specialists in endocrinology are to be involved. But yet, yet again, they're mentioning gender, they mentioned gender dysphoria, it's body dysmorphia, I think you find. And other than that, it's, it's, it's other comorbidities. And it certainly isn't the root cause because it is a symptom, not a cause. This ain't good, folks. I hope I'm wrong. Appropriate social, psychological and medical management. It's an intellectual problem, folks. The review already has a comprehensive research programme underway. It then reiterates about the research programme and that only if there is a research programme running would any child be put anywhere near, hopefully, puberty blockers and anything else that follows. Um, they then talk about management of patients accessing prescriptions from the unregulated sources. And they say that they advise against GPs initiating local safeguard protocols. If your child tells you that they want to remove their breasts or they want to remove their testicles and cock, if your child tells you that they think they're a girl when they're a boy, the first thing that you do is go, isn't that lovely? Now have a biscuit. And off the child goes. If they get old enough to tell it to you again, it's a safeguarding issue. It's a safeguarding issue because there are thousands of people out there who will grasp them by their hand and affirm them and tell them how wonderful it is that they feel that way and what a great individual they are. They'll love bomb them and once they've love bomb them, they'll socially transition. And once they've socially transitioned, they'll find a way to get them the puberty blockers, even if that means I'm getting illegally. This is from the Cass Review. And I hope that Hilary Cass will at some point explain herself. Tell me I'm wrong, viewers. Tell me I'm wrong because I desperately want to be. This is one of the most upsetting things I've come across in a long time. And it shows that what we're seeing is a kind of nicey-nicey liberal over the dinner table both sides of when what we should be seeing is the absolute condemnation of a cultist ideology, a danger to safeguarding, a danger to children, a danger to women and a danger to gay people. And they should be able to say it unequivocally that this does not get anywhere near the public services that are offered by our government or funded by our public purse. Tell me I'm wrong, because I need to be. That's it. I'm so pissed. I'll see you later.